All right. Hey guys, welcome to Kingdom Harvest. Uh, I'm Luke, and I'm going to go ahead and go over uh, identity today. So we've been going over identity this month uh, quite a bit, and I'm going to go over something that is related, but it has to do very much with our identity in Christ, which is the image of God. Uh, the image and likeness. So this is something the Bible sometimes it says image, sometimes it'll say image and likeness uh, in your translation. Uh, the image and likeness of God is something that mankind was established uh, with from the very beginning. <clears throat> so if you look in Genesis, uh, Genesis 1, right, 26 through 27, I think we've all uh, know this passage. Uh, God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. So you see it says it has both words there. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, uh, birds of the heavens, over livestock and over all the earth and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, created them. So talking about mankind here, right, as a whole species, human beings talking about them as the very image and likeness of God. So the Old Testament uses a couple I'm probably going to butcher all the pronunciations, but Salam, which would be more image, and uh, Demuth, which would be more like likeness. Um, both of these words have kind of similar meanings, but they... Um, but Salem, I think, specifically talks about more like a image that was created. So it'd be used for, a lot of times for like idols and stuff, like from from pagans is kind of a similar word for that. Uh, but it also can mean something that's like a representation uh, or a reflection or shadow of something as well. So that's the word that Genesis uses um, <clears throat> for it. Uh, again, in Genesis 5, 1, um, it opens up talking about the book of the generations of Adam, when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. Um, and it even goes further, Genesis 9, 6. What's important in Genesis 9, in that verse I just read, is that um, that was mankind in his fallen state, right? We're talking about mankind killing each other and how that's bad for a lot of reasons, but also because uh, we're made in the image of God. So that's an, also just an affront to God, right? If you're taking the life of the human being. Um, so what we learn from uh, verses like that is that mankind, uh, even though we are fallen due to sin, the image of God is not something that we lost. That's really important. Um, the, this is sometimes called in theology the, uh, once again, Latin, so per, pardon my pronunciation, uh, but a lot of times in theology it's called the uh, imago dei, die, uh, and the, that's the image. Like I said, this is uh, something that humans not only have, it's something that we are. It's innate in our design. From the very beginning, we were created in that image, the image of God, and we didn't lose it. So every person bears the image of God, no matter who they are. Um, like I said, sin did not change that. But what did change is the nature of a human being. So human beings no longer have that godly nature, just the godly image. They're no longer holy or set apart. They're unholy. And um, still holding this water bottle. Hold on. <laughs> um, no longer holy. And, um, but we're still God's handiwork. And like I was reading in Genesis 9, <clears throat> still deserve, uh, deserve uh, to be treated as such. They're also deserving of being redeemed by God. God, when it comes to our image, Genesis 5 3, 
talking about Adam after he lived 130 years. He fathered his son in his own likeness and after his image and named him Seth. So this relationship very much shows how likeness and image also relates to uh, our, uh, us being children of God as well uh, and how God is our father. Because he made us in likeness and image in a similar way to, you know, how we would have children in our own likeness and image. Uh, Once again, just to reinforce this idea of the value that people have, uh, James 3, 9, so going all the way into the New Testament, um, with it, uh, talking about the tongue, uh, with it we bless our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in the likeness of God. Uh, so once again, just reinforcing this idea of the value that people have just through our relationship of being created as image bearers of God. <clears throat> so we see this in the kind of the way that we are designed and the way that we act. Uh, not necessarily all always our nature, like I said, we're because of the fallen nature that people have before salvation. Um, But you do see it in some of the ways that we act. You know, human beings tend to be very, we're kind of creative, right? We like to make things, you know, God likes to make things. We have a way to reason and logic that animals don't have. Uh, That's something we get from God. God is someone who reasons and has a logic as well. Um, Empathy towards people. You know, we have that's that's a thing that God has in abundance. <laughs> you know, uh, all these things. Are... Is a representation or shadow uh, of the things that God is, but you still see it in full force in people. Um, we also see it in the way that we're the also in our design. We're made in three parts. We have our body, our spirit, and soul. Is God in himself is three persons. Uh, So it kind of mirrors that. Like like I said, there's the distinctness in God, and for us it's all kind of one thing, right? It's a lesser version of that, but it is sort of the same blueprint there. Something else that we get to is is, uh, sort of the sense of justice that we have. And this is starting to transition more into my main point. Um, Every person, I think, has sort of a sense of justice. They have a sense of like, okay, things are right or they are wrong. Um, But the thing is, our nature... sends them in the wrong direction. Proverbs uh, 21.2 talks about this. Every, the, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the heart. So Romans 2, uh, 14 through 15 also uh, says a similar thing. For when Gentiles who do not have the law by nature do what the law requires, They are a law to themselves, even though they do not have the law. They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse or even excuse them. So people have this sort of idea of right and wrong and can excuse a lot of actions because, well, obviously I'm right, um, but they don't have the nature of Christ. So it becomes a bit of a problem for people. And I think that really is the problem. Uh, People in the world, we exist as creatures who are created in this image of God, but we don't have an identity. We don't have an identity anymore because we're fallen. Uh, We're beings that don't act in the nature that we were supposed to be created in, right? So you have something that's been made in the image and likeness of God, but it doesn't act like it. And that causes a lot of problems because... Um, you don't know that God loves you and made you in his image and likeness. Uh, and to, you live, um, uh, you don't live in that kind of that nature that we were supposed to have, and we live apart from him. 
this even goes to the point of uh, because people don't have this understanding of who God is, that they start to reach the conclusion that it must be God. It's evil, but if it was just evil, you know, that'd be terrible, but it's also misguided. You're, we're seeing this sort of design that we've been created in, but, the, but our sense of justice, our sense of right and wrong, all of that is so skewed and out of whack that, you know, uh, we, we're seeing all this potential that we have, but not knowing the source of who made that who created human beings to have this sort of potential. Um, human beings have to turn to other things and other sources to find their identity now. Um, if they're not finding it in Christ, they're going to find it in something. And that's and literally everything in the world is going to try to tell you what your identity is. And we get it from so many different sources that are wrong. Uh, Um, <clears throat> checking this verse if I want to read this part. Um, I'm going to transition actually into the next part of my talk here, my teaching. So <clears throat> what we're talking about here is basically the the image and potential that people were created in initially. Um, but we're not walking out that nature, like I said. So I'll give you an example of kind of what I'm talking about. Um, if any of you guys have ever seen the show uh, American Pickers, <laughs> uh, so it's about these guys that go around to different places like uh, people's garages or old old cars like some guy has just an old broken down car in his garage that he hasn't touched for years it's vintage and these guys both know the make and model uh, everything about this car and what it was designed to do and they geek out over it they get you know they get so excited about it and they try to talk the whoever owns it into letting them buy it and what they'll do is they'll even get it fixed up they'll get it to run and then they sell it so what they're doing is they're literally like looking at a car looking at the way it's supposed to be designed the way it's supposed to run the, the thing that it was made to do that it's not doing anymore so it, the car is you know it's a, still a car but it doesn't function anymore uh, it's not living up to its potential a car is, so the car has an innate value, but it's not being used for its original purpose. And that's what, uh, what I'm talking about here with people is like, we have this innate value as human beings, but we don't, uh, but we need Christ in order to bring us up to where that value is, um, and to bring us up to our original purpose. Um, otherwise, we're just like this car collecting dust, not really doing anything. Um, so I'll, I'll read through a couple uh, verses here. Colossians 3.10 uh, says, uh, Put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. 2 Corinthians 3.18 and we all, with unveiled face, behold the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory. Twenty-four says, uh, "Put on the new self, created after the likeness of God in true righteousness." And holiness. So, 
What these verses are talking about here is about putting on the new nature. Uh, so, uh, and of course, you know, Romans, we know, obviously talks about the renewing of the mind um, and talks about how we start to walk out that nature. Um, that's why we need Christ. We, Christ is the one that lets us walk out our new nature and completely recreates our spirit so that we are able to actually live out the way that we were supposed to. Um, that's why in the world, I think people kind of get their, the idea is there, but it's sort of askew where we talk about how everybody is value and all this potential in them and all this stuff, but they're reaching in, in a soulish way, like in their soul to try to figure out how, who they are and what they're supposed to do and what potential they have. And it can leave us frustrated. Um, I know a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of us too, like I always relate as a more of a creative person. I always think about the way that um, there's so many filmmakers who are very, very talented, I find, um, but they're not Christian. And it makes you wonder, it's like, you know, wh where did they get all that? Well, they're made in the image of God. They have all this creativity. They have all this ability, um, but they don't glorify God with it. They glorify themselves with it. You know, they don't have that nature of Christ. Um, but they have that image of Christ. That's why we act sort of in a way like God, like it says, like sort of that shadow, but it's not fully. I actually uses several Greek words for image and likeness, kind of like with Hebrew. Uh, but one of the main ones it uses is econ. Icon. So kind of where we get the word icon, um, which is a mirror-like representation, referring to what is very close in resemblance. So we don't really get in the Bible uh, too much of how Adam and Eve acted in the garden. We kind of get mostly they were there, they were made in the image and likeness of God, and then they chose sin and fell. That's pretty much it. Uh, but with the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ, uh, when he came to earth, we were given a lot of detail about how he composed himself, how he lived his life. And the Bible uses that word econ to describe him. God. So, Jesus was sent as the ultimate image bearer of God. He was the one that set the uh, example of what we're supposed to be like. Um, and the verses I have for that, we've got 1 Corinthians 15, 49. Uh, Just as we have borne the image of the man of dust, we shall also bear the image of the man of heaven. Um, 2 Corinthians, once again in the Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Um, in their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel, of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. <clears throat> so, uh, Hebrews 1, 2 through 4. of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purifications for sin, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited and more excellent than theirs. So what we're talking about is literally a... a person that came down and actually lived out being the exact image and likeness with everything that comes with it, uh, that, the nature, that, that uh, a, creation, a, a being of the image and likeness of God is supposed to live out as. 
Um, so this is why Christ is the ultimate example uh, of what we were supposed to do. Um, he walked it out. He actually can walk out what we can't by ourselves. Um, he's the one that, through him, we're able to, you know, refurbish that old car that's stuck in the garage. It's the thing that lets it run, lets it function by its original design rather than the, you know, <laughs> rather than not functioning in its original design and its original purpose. Um, and that's, I, like I said, that's sort of the problem that we run into. There's so many people that just don't know that that's what their purpose is. That's what their design is. Until people understand that, until a human being can understand that, they're going to find their identity in other things and be unsatisfied by it. They're going to look at themselves as God because, you know, we're made in his image, but not understand that the source of all of that is God himself, the one that actually said, hey, I want to create beings who are my image. Not for... People should glorify God, um, but we need that new nature to do that. And I think, I think that's about where I'd, I'd leave it, I think. Just um, when it comes to our identity, we need to understand that the image is where, the image of God is where that all originates. Being made in the image of God, we want to identify in that. We want to identify in what God's original purpose was. And for us, the only way to do that is through Christ, uh, just because of the way sin has affected us um, and marred the image that was supposed to be godly is instead worldly. Um, so in order to reach what we're trying to do, sort of that, that nature that we have now, um, and through Christ, actually kill that nature. Get rid of that old nature and live in this godly nature in order to uh, become more like the image of Christ. So we identify with Christ in order to uh, become more like the image of God. And that's sort of the thought that I wanted to leave with us today because I think it's really important to understand the image, to understand the identity. Part two. Part two.